On today's Try to Finish Something, one of my new favorite nerd groups on Facebook is the Star Wars Room Builders, and that's something I've been interested in for a long time. I have one wall of my office that looks like some sort of imperial bunker where I've got helmets and all kinds of stuff displayed, and right around the corner from that, I would like that wall to look like the outside of a Tatooine city, complete with part of a hangar door, and I've recruited two people from that same nerd group to help me in this project, and I'm going to do a control panel and a lighted sign that says Hangar 32, and uh, I'm going to get to that project today. I'm not really. I've seen the future, and it's not going to go like I planned. It's going to be another failure, and I'm going to have to take a right turn and do something else that's Mandalorian related, and Today's project will have to do with my room, it'll have to do with the Mandalorian, and I'm going to get really frustrated. And that's what I'm going to do on today's Try to Finish Something. So this is my Imperial Bunker Wall. It was all done with just paint and simple plumbing supplies. It's super low tech, but it does the job perfectly. And over here in this corner, I want to put an outdoor Tatooine style scene with that, you know, stucco style walls and part of a sliver of the hangar door over there to the right. I want a hangar 32 sign that lights up and a control panel down below with some pipes sticking out of it. This time, I want to tech it up a little bit. So I reached out to do a collaboration with a few different people. First, Ado Morin, link to his socials in the video description. He does amazing stuff with Adobe Illustrator, and he said that he would be happy to create the hanger sign in Illustrator. And I sent this over to him, done in Photoshop, just for reference, and let him be as creative as he wanted, and he nailed it. He used the same colors that I had in the example, but I don't actually have those colors in acrylic. The orange parts I want to light up at the top and the bottom, then those will be black and not light up, and in the middle the 32 will light up. I have red, so I'll do the 32 in red with the white, and that'll all light up, and the black won't. All right, this is the plan. Super simple, just cut this all out with the Glowforge and put it together like a giant jigsaw puzzle. I need to rotate it, then make it just the cut lines at .0001, and send it over to Glowforge so the laser can do its thing. Uploading error. You know, I was just telling someone in one of the nerd groups how easy a Glowforge is. Error. Says I need to reboot the Glowforge and refresh the browser. Error. Great. You know, you're not even seeing this in real time. I am two hours into trying to get this thing to cut out. I'm starting to lose it. Error. You know, I, I have to get a video out. Error. I, I promise to deliver two videos every error. Oh, you know, this is not helping me finish something. I really should have stuck to low tech on this one. It's time to switch gears. I know you're probably saying the same thing as my oldest daughter. Weren't you already approved with your pre Beskar season one Mando? Yeah, I was, but it's not accurate enough for me. Mine was printed two plus years ago, and I've been drooling over the Great Ape Studio 3D modeled file, and I had the wonderful people over at Clever 3D Studio print Darren's Great Ape chest plate, and it's awesome. I will add some links in the video description to both of them as well. I'm looking at this reference photo, and I'm going to chew up the dents with a soldering iron, and then add that cat head shaped one in the top corner that wasn't included in the model. I'll Mark them all up with a white sharpie, then get to adding my own bit of damage. These prints are nice and thick by Clever 3D Studio. I have a lot of room to play. I'm more pushing the melted plastic in and not pulling it out. 
When I'm done, I take the Dremel and soften up my damage just a little bit. Now to take it outside and add black primer and sand. I'm layering the colors and toothpaste using the picture as a reference. Starting with silver, let it dry, then toothpaste where you see silver in the photos. Then moving on to dark gray and more toothpaste, being careful not to remove the toothpaste already in the silver parts. Then Sahara Beige in a few strategic spots and some more toothpaste. The way this chips off really gives you a natural looking layered chipping effect and I love it. Once all of that dries, I spray with my warm caramel brown color that I will redden and darken with the weathering. Ooh, notice my wife bought me white toothpaste and I can stop using the kids aim. When you wipe off the toothpaste, I find a dry paper towel to remove the bulk works really good. It's messy, but the results are worth it. The way it works is the paint sticks to the toothpaste that you're removing, leaving the layers of the undercolor. It's simple and amazing all at the same time. Once the bulk is gone, wipe it off with a warm, damp paper towel or rag and look at those results. You can't argue with that. Now I'm just going to do the layers of weathering the exact same as I've done on this channel before with browns, blacks, and this time I'm going to add a little bit of brick red. I'm already running long, so what I'll do is I'll include a link up there for a few that I've done that has some more weathering detail, but let me jump ahead just a little bit. After I've already done the weathering layers with the same routine, slopping on the paint and wiping it off with a paper towel and repeating, sneaking up on this effect. But you can see the difference here in the chest plates. I know it's not major, but it bugs me. See how the top chest is more narrow and the, I don't know, Mando boobs are more pronounced on my old one? Now my chest is going to be more squared and more accurate. My last bit of weathering is my rabbit hole of OCD, trying to get all of the cracks and colors as close to the actual photo as I can. Now, my armor is later in the season and a bit dirtier, but I'm obsessed with trying to get the scratches and color variances to line up and match the reference photo. Okay, the hanger sign created by Edo is not done, but the paint and weathering of my new season one pre-Beskar Mandalorian is finished. I really appreciate you watching and hope this helped in some way. If you did like it, please subscribe and tell a friend. If you didn't, as always, just keep it to yourself. And we'll see you next time as we try to finish something. <laughs>